everybody! In today's video, the first part is going to be watercoloring these beautiful little birds. I'm going to put on some relaxing music for you and just let you watch the process. And then the second part of the video will be putting together the card, so I will come back then. Okay, I didn't want to cut this part out any more than I wanted to cut Splotchy out visiting me while I was making this video. But here we go, right on cue, little Splotch. He's on my shoulder. So every now and then I'll lean into the video and show you his beautiful self. Anyway, I am the admin of our local Buy Nothing group, which I highly recommend. It's a great way to give things to your neighbors and to get things like this music that I got from a music book that someone was giving away on the Buy Nothing. You can also get cats on the Buy Nothing if you need a cat to barge into your videos. But anyway, I wanted to show you in addition to just what I'm going to do with this music page out of this book that I got, I also want to show you the book because it completely cracks me up. <laughs> it's, it's really cute. I almost couldn't cut it up because it was so funny, but I did it anyway because you know I'm a ruthless book cutter. I used the circle shaker dies to create a little frame for my birds, but I wanted the center part of that frame to be kind of a bridge between the white card base and the vanilla tone of the music. And it's going to hold my sentiment, this little center part of this donut, the donut hole, if you will. And so to do that, I wanted to lighten it up by just using a little bit of acrylic paint almost in like a dry brushing technique. This is something that I like to do if I want my layers of paint to dry really quickly in between adding more layers and making it a little bit more opaque. I just get a teeny little dot of the paint and I use a foam brush which kind of soaks up a lot of the paint and just add layer by layer. I don't have to worry about the paper getting too wet, etc. Because this is thinner paper. Music book paper is thinner paper, and so you have to treat it a little more gently than you would like a water-friendly paper. It's not designed for what I'm doing. So that technique lets me put multiple layers of paint on without really damaging the surface of the paper or getting it too wet. So I'm sort of comparing it to the unpainted paper to see if it's as white as I want it to be before adding more layers of paint. This is just an easy way to change any printed material that you might be using, like a book page, for example. A lot of the pages that I use out of books are older books because I go get them at half price books, and so a lot of them have been in people's libraries for a while. They cost me 10 or 15 cents. 
And so I don't feel bad about cutting them up. Not that I would anyway. And, but they can have that yellow cast to them. So this book actually came with the little sticker of the store where this person bought it in Pennsylvania, which I think is kind of fun. And you can see that it's a much older book and it has this little intro in it. But man, when I opened this book and I started looking at the titles of these songs, it was just cracking me up. Now, Jig, that's pretty normal. You would have a Jig. Um, but some of these other ones are a hoot. Okay. The Arkansas Traveler, Billy in the Lowland. We're writing a song about Billy. Duxbury Hornpipe is starting to get funny. Within a mile of blah blah blah, the Virginia Reel, that's normal. And here we go. Uncle Joe. We're just writing a song about Uncle Joe. The Grapevine Twist. The Vexed Editor's Reel. So this person was getting tired of writing this music at that point. Cauliflower? Who writes a song about cauliflower? What does that even mean? The Flop Eared Mule? Leather Breeches? Was that some kind of controversy about clothing? Sugar in the Gourd or the Indiana Hoedown. I like, that's the voice that I read that in. Sailor Hornpipe, those are normal. Broken Chord Jig, there's just somebody who didn't know how to write a song, so they wrote a song with a broken chord in it. Hole in her stocking. So anyway, Mel Bay's Folk and Fiddle book just cracked me up no end. But I still cut it up and used it on my card. So sorry, book worshippers. It's just how I roll. Anyway, so I'm going to finish this very simply with a white base. As I told you, I wanted to make a bridge between the white base and the vanilla music paper. So I'll just center the open portion of the music paper on here. Now with paper this thin, there's like a really fine line between not having enough glue and having too much glue. You don't want to get any little bumps. This glue is great about smoothing out so you don't get those little bumps. But you want to put glue all over because the paper is so thin. You want it to have a good bond with the cardstock because it can be a little fragile the older that it gets. Now this little ring in the center, I'm just going to leave that exactly like it was, but I'm going to put it in place so that it matches. I want all of the entire construct to be seamless when I'm done. So I will make sure that that is in the correct orientation before it goes into that little opening. Another plug for being able to move things when you use liquid glue. It's really important, especially here with, like I said, older, more fragile paper. If it's not in the right place the first time, you can just kind of wiggle it around and get it in the right place without damaging the paper at all. So now the little white section is like a highlight section for the sentiment and the birds are going to be kind of flying around that little open area and that ties that card base together with this warmer card panel. Look, Splotchy's foot. He just could not stay away from me when I was filming this. I don't know what the deal is. So anyway, that looks great. It's all seamless. And then that pop of that really vibrant phthalo blue green shade Daniel Smith watercolor is so pretty against that warm background. I just think that this is kind of a match made in heaven. I, again, I'm painting imaginary birds. I don't know if there's a bird that looks like this, but you know what? I like these colors. And so that's why I painted my bird that way. So I die cut the sentiment and I'm putting it just in the middle of that circle. And then I will put the birds down. Now, these are multiple layers of watercolor paper that are layered up to create these birds. So I watercolored them all individually, as you saw, and then put them together. So this is a really sturdy little bird, not a dirty little bird, a sturdy little bird. So if you want the little tail that sticks up there that I just pointed out, you can sort of bend that paper because it is so thick and make the wings or the tails stick out. I just chose not to glue that down it already has its own dimension. And so when somebody pulls it out of the envelope, that little tail will be lifted off that paper because it is such sturdy watercolor paper. So I like to pop my little glass board magnets onto my birds while they dry. You don't need too long, but I do like to get them really adhered to the card for a second with those magnets. It's one of the things I love best. 
about my glass mat. And I have a 20% off coupon you can use if you would like one. You may have seen the shadow of Splotchy's tail there. He is still on my neck. Crazy little cat. So here is a close-up of what these beautiful, vibrant little birdies look like on the little music paper. It's like they're singing the song in the background and then the little highlighted center portion versus the warm vanilla music paper is just so much fun. I hope you've enjoyed this. Thanks so much for watching.